Hi, this is Matt at AppWorks, and today we're going to be looking at a basic feature in FileMaker, which is the case function. This is a really important calculation, and we're going to take a look at a case of it. So let's say we have this database, and we want to have a little message or something that pops up that tells me um, whether the customer's invoices are under their credit limit, over their credit limit, something like that. And we're going to probably evolve this over time. How do we write this code? Okay, so if you have FileMaker, 17 or 18, and you certainly should because it's totally great, you have a feature in your tools menu called Data Viewer. And in the Data Viewer, you have two tabs. One of them is like currently what's going on, and the other one is the Watch tab. And in the Watch tab of Data Viewer, you can um, create a new um, line just by clicking this plus down here. And this is where I think is a really good place to write code because you can test it because it looks right in your database. So let's just start with the case statement here. Let's start with case. And then, um, so the function of a case statement is basically test and result. In fact, let me step back a second here. And if I just type case, it tells me case test, then result. And then test result, test result, you can kind of keep going. And then also there's a failover at the very end, a default result. I usually punctuate them like this. I usually have the case on the first line, and then on each line after that, uh, let's say that I want to do something really simple like a message if there's no credit limit set. Um, if credit limit is, is empty, if is empty credit limit. then the message I want to show is no credit limit set. So semicolon, and then in quotes, no credit limit. Okay. So that's a very, very simple uh, case statement right there. It only has one test and one result. And then there's another important thing to observe here, which is this checkbox that says automatically evaluate, which I recommend that you check because it's a pretty useful thing. Okay, uh, if we click monitor, uh, I'll move this one up to the top so we can kind of see what's going on. Right now, the value for this, this particular statement is nothing. But if I scroll through my records, when I get to one that does not have a credit limit, it's actually going to say no credit limit. And if I go back to a record that does have a credit limit, then it's now empty here, which is pretty, pretty great, right? Okay, so let's go one step farther. Let's say we want to add another line to this calculation that says, well, yeah, but now I want to know if the, um, if the credit limit, uh, maybe their total invoices is greater than their credit limit, right? So uh, I have another field in here called unpaid invoices. So I can say if total invoices unpaid is greater than the credit limit, then the message I want to show is, um, uh, over credit limit, right? When I can put that in. Notice on the very, very last line, I don't have to put this extra semicolon, but on each line, uh, when I have my test in the first part and then the result, if I want more lines, I have to have um, a semicolon at the end. Okay, so if I monitor this, I can flip through my records and I can see that one of my records, the first one here is over credit limit. Okay, another little thing I'm going to show you here is the default one. So if I just simply add to this one here a new line, and I'll put another value like other, just the word other. And as soon as I have that in there, if um, there actually is a credit limit, and the total amount of the invoices for this customer is 500, so they're within their $2,000 credit limit, I haven't yet written the code to show what to say, so it just has the word other right now. So this is, this is already working uh, pretty uh, well for me because it's showing what I can do. And the nice thing about this is you can write these case statements to be really long. They can have tens or hundreds of lines of code. They're pretty easy to maintain. And there's going to be another video talking about the let function that makes these even easier to write. And that's it for today. Thanks for your time.